Good evening, friends. Very happy to be back again tonight in the service of the King, representing our Lord Jesus Christ in his undying love, unfailing power, unlimited grace, the first, the last, he that was, which is, and shall come, the root and offspring of David and the morning star, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley. Just everything you could say, that's him and everything in being right. And in him we are complete, aren't we? We are complete in Christ Jesus. Now, <clears throat> this, uh, this afternoon I was speaking to you, so tonight it's service of healing for the sick. It was my time to preach the gospel this afternoon. It's God's turn tonight to confirm whether I told the truth or not. If anyone preaches or says or makes a claim, a man can make a claim of anything, but that doesn't exactly mean it's so until God speaks and he says it's so. Then when God says it's so, that makes it the truth. See, that's the truth then. In Hebrews 11, 2, it said, God testifies of his gifts. And that's true. I believe that, don't you? He does. He testifies of his gifts. Now, <clears throat> tonight I want to, instead of preaching, I want to just give a testimony, read some scripture, give a testimony, and call the prayer line. I know many of you here, and you go to work in the morning. I was a little late getting in, and Billy was a little late getting up there after me, and frankly, I met him on the road coming. I just drove in out there, and we swapped cars and come right down to the place, and I hear them singing as they come across the hill, only believe. <laughs> so I was just a little late to begin with. And now, remember tomorrow afternoon service of the apostles. I always want to think it to be the acts of the Holy Spirit in the apostles. For it was the Holy Spirit in the apostles setting forth an example through all the ages. What the Holy Spirit was then, it is now. And what the Holy Spirit did to that church, it does to this church. If this church will be just as submissive to it as that church was, it will bring it just the same result. You believe that? It will. Just your submission to Christ. Now, in the great divine trinity of God, in the day, it's all the one God, God in a trinity, the fatherhood, the sonship, and the Holy Spirit dispensation. Now, if a man rejected God in the days of fatherhood under Moses and the law, well, he was put to death. If he disobeyed God, broke his command. When Jesus came, he said, Now whosoever speaks the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven him. And the world, this world, are the one to come. So to reject the Holy Spirit tonight is more serious than to reject God the Father in the days of Moses, are to reject Jesus Christ when he was here on earth, walking in flesh. And as the people in them days did not understand about God the Father, the people thought the Israelites were queer, they made the blood on the doors and so forth. They thought they were an odd sort of people. And then they set up a religion then and made it a universal religion. And then the next thing came in, was Jesus. When he come, he just tore all the bottom out from under. And they thought he was an imposter, but he was exactly what the Scripture said he would be. But they rejected him. The church rejected him. Well, now, then after the going away of Jesus, the Holy Spirit come, and now they set up a basis on Jesus and rejected the Holy Spirit, just exactly the same as they've always been since. We want to get to that this week, God willing, so you'll be sure to thoroughly understand what this all is about. Now, in Acts, the second chapter, and beginning with the 22nd verse, I want you to listen closely to the reading of his word. Peter speaking. 
The theme is Jesus Christ. The time is A.D. 33 at the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured out. Ye men of Israel, hearken unto these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as you yourselves also know. Listen closely. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God. In other words, God had vindicated his son. A man approved of God among you by wonders, signs, miracles, what God did by him, he said, and you yourselves are a witness. And I say that the same Jesus that was rejected 1,900 years ago among his people doing the same thing tonight in the form of the Holy Spirit is just as rejected now as he was then and more so. Same thing. Now, I want to read out of St. John. The fifth chapter, and I want to begin at the 28th verse. Marvel not at, at this, for an hour is coming in which all that is in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, they which have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is true, is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. If I bear witness on myself, my witness is not true. There is another that bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. I receive not testimony from man, but these things that I say that ye might be saved. He was a burning and shining light, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. Now, listen close. But I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself which has sent me has borne witness of me. Jesus speaking to the Jews. He said, you don't have to judge me. He said, because... God has already judged you by what you think of me, in other words. That I come and testify to the truth. And God come down and confirmed that that was the truth. And the Father bears witness of his Son. And then his witness is the truth because the Scripture spoke of his Son. Jesus said, well, did Isaiah speak of you have ears and can't hear, eyes and can't see? Well, Isaiah... Isaiah 35 told just what he would do. The lame would leap like a heart and so forth would take place. He said, you can discern the signs of the time by the sun setting and so forth, but the, or the weather, but the signs of the time you cannot discern. For if you had known me, you would have known my day. Now tonight, friends, this same Lord Jesus that I'm reading about, he is the present one here on earth today and fulfilling the word that he said. And God is testifying that it is the truth. No way at all for you to doubt, unless you just want to. The hardest thing in the world is somebody being taught one thing and then having to see something that turns them all the way around. That's what was the matter. The Jews rejected Jesus. They have been taught one thing. The rabbi said, we can't change that. But yet, scripturally, Jesus was rightly and the Messiah. But they had it set up some other way. 
And today, isn't it just as true that we have our own ideas set up when God works in wondrous ways as wonders to perform? Works many ways, and we have it just the way we want it. But God will send it to us, His provided way for us. Receive it and be rejoicing. Now, I want to give testimony. And as I've said, the theme of my revivals is this, is declaring to the world, and I'm on my third trip around the world, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That through every critic and every type of criticism that I know that Satan has led me with these statements that I'm giving of Jesus Christ, he has done everything that I know could be done speaking of to try to overthrow it, but every time God has brought it out, triumph and won a victory. Every time. Check it, test it by government agents. And everywhere, to nation, every time I have a thorn in the flesh, an angel of Satan who follows and tries to buffet or to beset but he's been defeated in every case by the Holy Spirit, and God come out triumph, winning hundreds and thousands to Christ in the time. Now, Jesus said, if I testify myself, my testimony is not true, but I testify of another. So if any man comes and says, now, I am the healer. Now, he's testifying of himself, and his testimony is not true. For there's one healer, that's God. And there's one mediator between God and man, and that's the man, Jesus Christ. And he was the one who died to bring the relationship that was once lost between God and man back again. And he is our provided sacrifice for our sickness and our salvation. He was wounded for our transgressions. With his stripes we were healed. Now, Jesus himself, when he was here, I quote this again so people will surely understand. Jesus was an ordinary man that walked out here on the street like you meet daily. He was born to peasants, wrapped in swatlands cloth, laid in a manger. I think of Simeon, back there in the temple, old man, an old sage had been told by the Holy Spirit that he wasn't going to see death until he seen the Lord Christ. Luke, the second chapter, you read the article. And he wasn't afraid to go around and tell people that he was going to see the Christ because the Holy Spirit told him so. So there's no two Holy Spirits, there's only one. So the same Holy Spirit that was with Simeon is the same Holy Spirit here tonight. So, now watch, an old man, 80 or better years old, old sage, long white hair and beard, very renowned among the people, a teacher, a master in Israel, had to be blameless as touching the law, and the Holy Spirit told him that he wasn't going to see death until he seen the Lord's Christ. So he went around testifying to everybody that he wasn't going to die before he saw Christ. Could you imagine what the church people of that day thought about him? Well, they thought the old fellow was a little mentally upset. But he had a good reason to testify that because the Holy Ghost said he was so. What the Holy Spirit says, it's the truth. So he kept on testifying. God has always had a little remnant of people somewhere who would believe him. Sometimes it's got down to one man, the days of Noah. And sometimes real low. But he's always had somebody who would believe him who he could trust and put his hand on and say, this is my man, see? Always had a remnant on the earth. Then he had a few at that time. So in the days when Jesus was born, they didn't have press and so forth like we have today and radio and television. News just come merely from lip to ear. And when Jesus was born, some magis was watching for the star of Jacob to rise, so they followed it over from the Orient and worshipped him out on the hillside or in the Bethlehem manger, rather, as a young child. 
Not a little infant like Christian tradition has it. It was a young child. Baby's two years old. Herod wondered immediately, killing children from two years old down. Why did he kill them from two years old? They're just a little new suckling baby a few hours old. See? Strange how people can get things mixed up, isn't it? See, it was a young child. A young child's not an infant. It's a young child. He's two years old. So the Magi's come from the Orient following a star that led them to the child. The shepherds was on the hill, a bunch of peasants out there herding the sheep, not on the 25th day of December. That's Catholicism. <laughs> Long in April. 25th day of December, it's as cold as it is in Indiana and Judea. <laughs> so they wasn't laying out there on the hill in the snow watching sheep. <laughs> so that's just something they set up, so they take it on that way, but he wasn't born on December the 25th. You ought to go over there one time and see how they laugh at that. <clears throat> now, but however, when the sh shepherds heard the voice of the angel, the singing, they went into Jerusalem and told what they were down into Bethlehem and told the sights they'd seen and they met the Christ. When I, of a Jewish law, every eight days the mother of the child has to come and offer her sacrifice for her cleansing, purification, and for the circumcision of the child. Now let's give just a little drama here before we... Get ready for the line. Let's set up the picture now. Something's been noised about way down in Judea there, about a star, some fellows coming in, about a star appearing. I hear them talking around the street saying, you know that bunch of fanatics is believing it? But it was so. And then here's an old man, let's say it's, let's say it's Monday morning, and here's the people all standing in the building for worship. Thousands of Jews in the land in those days. Many of them was up in there for taxation. And there's probably two or three million Jews in the land in that day, so there'd probably be as many as 50 or 100 babies born every day from the Jews. Well, that meant every day standing in the line for purification and circumcision of the child would be at least 50 mothers standing with their sacrifices for the purification of the child. Let's say it's Monday morning. Here stands a long string of people Many thousands swarming in and out the temple. And along the road, here's a woman holding a little chain. She's got a lamb on it. She's a rich woman. She's dressed in fine laces and silks, holding her little baby here all wrapped up real nice. And the neighbor woman who is close to the same church she does there, talking about the baby and how lovely it is and changing remarks. Let's look along the line. But way down there, I see a little girl standing about 18, 19 years old, with a veil over her face, holding two turtle doves, a peasant's offering. Poor man. And she's got a baby in her arms. And some of them says, say, that's that Mary, that, that's that illegitimate child there. See, she says she's not even married to that Joseph there, and she's got this baby before he was born. Don't stand near her. Get back. This reminds me of the ch his church today. Stand back. Get away from him. See. Send him back, give him room. But look in that mother's arms. That baby's not wrapped in fine linen. The baby's wrapped in swaddling's cloth. You know what swaddling's cloth is? What they told me there was what the uh, ox plows with, the, and the yoke rubs him on the neck. They just wrap that cloth around there. That's called swaddling cloth. And in the manger, they didn't have enough to wrap the baby in, so they just unwrapped this old swaddling's cloth that's hanging on a peg or something and wrapped the child in it. Think of it. Some of we people, the way we dress and act and carry on. And the very Savior of heaven with a rag wrapped around him. She was holding her baby. In her little innocent heart, she knew who that baby belonged to. No matter what anybody else said, she knew whose it was. Every man tonight holds that baby in his heart. They know what they are, no matter what the rest of the world said. The people stayed back. And there she's holding the little baby wrapped in swaddling's cloth. The Redeemer of the world, the very God of heaven, made flesh among us. Wrapped in swaddling's cloth, she was rocking the little fella in her arms and playing with him. She knew in her heart that God gave her that baby by the Holy Spirit. They moved up a little farther, and the priest called another one. They moved up like standing in a prayer line. Let's look over there in a the prayer room about a half a block away. I see an old 
preacher by the name of Simeon, sitting there reading the Scriptures, all we like sheep have gone astray. The Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. About that time, if God had given him the promise by the Holy Ghost that he wasn't going to die until he seen the Christ, when the Christ appeared, it's time for God to call him. I see the Holy Spirit say, Simeon, stand up. You believe in being led by the Spirit? I can see Simeon stand up and say, Yes, Lord. All right, start walking. Here he goes. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Starts walking out. He don't know where he's going. Just the way the Holy Spirit leads him. Here he comes out through the temple, down around the mobs of people. First thing you know, he comes to that long line of them babies. Here he comes walking, led by the Holy Spirit. My, come right on down and stop before this little woman that had this little disgraced baby, as they thought. Pick the little fellow up in his arms, the tears running down his white beard. He said, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to thy word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. What was the matter? He was expecting to see Christ because the Holy Spirit told him he'd see Christ. You usually get just what you're expecting. You come to the meeting to criticize, the devil will show you plenty to criticize. If you come to the meeting to be blessed, God will give you a blessing. Whatever you expect, that's what you're going to find. Simeon was expecting to see the Lord. And God led him right to it just at the same time. Listen, when the deep calls to the deep, there's got to be a deep to respond to it. That's right. If there's something in here, a creation in here, before that creation can be there, a creator has to create that creation. As I've said many times before, Finn was on a fish's back. There had to be a water for him to swim in or he wouldn't have no fin. And if there's something in here calling out for more of God, there's got to be more of God out in order to respond to it. How many of you here believe in divine healing? Why, brother, if it wasn't even written in the Bible, it has to be something to it. If there's something in here calling out for divine healing, there's a fountain open somewhere. Look, let's take another picture. Oh, I don't want to get started here. Let's see another picture, just a moment. Look way over there in the corner, an old blind prophetess by the name of Anne. She didn't leave the temple day and night, but she sat there serving the Lord, praying. She was looking for the deliverance of Israel. All right, watch. Amen. Oh, I love this. The Holy Spirit says, stand up, Anne. She was blind, we're told. Here comes that old blind prophetess down through that building, weaving amongst the people, blind, led by the Holy Spirit came right straight to where Christ was in the arms of the mother and raised up her hands and blessed God. She was expecting to see him, yet blind, the Holy Spirit led her. The same Holy Spirit that led Simeon and Anne is the same Holy Spirit that's led you here tonight. For you believe the Bible teaches divine healing. You believe the Bible teaches Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that same Jesus that led them, that same Spirit is the Spirit that's led you here tonight, and I know that He's here. Believe Him. Now, if you're here, God led you here. The Holy Spirit that led Simeon led you here. And if you're here sick tonight, believe Him. He's brought you to the fountain. He promised divine healing. The Bible teaches that. Whosoever will, let Him come. Now you're here. Reminds me just, I've got about eight minutes. We was in Sweden just before leaving from here. I saw a vision. Many of you here are witness of this. No doubt. I told it before about 75 or 80,000 people before I crossed. About a year before I left, I saw a vision of a little boy. Little blocky haircut. Little brown eyes. His feet were run through his sock. Legs all crippled down and mashed up. He had been killed in an accident laying on the road where there's a big bunch of pine trees and some rocks. I was on my road that night to Miami, Florida, to meet Brother Bosworth, Brother Gordon Lindsay, and Brother Jack Moore, where we were going down there to take a tent meeting. And I told them, and I told it before about 10,000 people or more there. 
And one night, a man, his little boy, had drowned it out in an irrigation ditch. And he said he would let the undertaker take the little boy until I come and looked at it. That night, I seen a crowd way back over there, and I went and looked at the little boy. He was real black-headed, well-dressed. I said, no, sir. This little boy's about eight years old. How many, is there anybody here hear me tell of this before it come to pass? Raise your hands. Look here. That's about a year or more before it happened. Now, I have something else here to roll down that God's going to do right here in my Bible. I'll tell you about it when I get a chance and see if it isn't just that way. God says so. That's got to be so. Now, then I went and looked at the little fella. I said, no, Dad, that isn't the child. But I offered prayer of consolation. We went on up to come back to Indiana, went out through the West, over through Canada, down through Toledo, or up in Canada and Windsor, come on back down, went out into the South, down through Houston, came back, and went overseas. And one day I'd been fasting much. We was up in the land of the midnight sun. i never forget that night. In the afternoon, we went up to Colpio at the tower up there, showed where the Germans had come in and bombed the little cities, and how sweet and humble those sins are. There's the battlegrounds of the world. They have to trust God for everything they get. And yet, they're the most honest nation to us there is in the world. They pay their war debt. Amen. How they do it, I don't know. They just slave men and women. Here are some of you ladies here tonight. Dress real fine. You'll see the fins. Great big thick skirts on like that. Big high boots. Summer and winter out with a pitchfork pitching hay. Amen. They ain't got time to stretch out on beaches and things and act the way the American women does. Plenty of idleness. I wonder what it's going to look like in the day of judgment. <laughs> Come along the long side of the road and you see a bunch of them sitting under a tree. They're eating their little sandwich or whatever it is, and they'll kneel down and have a prayer meeting right there. I've seen one place where the combined a pastor, there's some of the fellows that before me give them a track, and they're talking about the meeting down there, wrote and finished, and a bunch of women had laid down their cradles where they were cradling the grain. And about 15 of them received the baptism of the Holy Ghost under a tree standing down there. Hungering and thirsting. You can't interest people until they get thirsty. It's some water. Unless they're hungry, you can't tell them about nothing to eat. Now look, then up there, I was, we was up in that tower and I, all their songs, there's no foolishness. Even their songs are in minors. And they were singing, I, just something began to dig in my heart. I came down. There's a drunken British Englishman down there, and he was all crying. I walked to him, and he spoke English. I said, well, it's good to hear English. I seen he was drinking. I said, what's the matter? He said, I heard them songs. I said, what kind of people is that? I said, they're Christians. Are you? He said, no, sir. I said, aren't you ashamed to treat Jesus the way you are? I said, what's your name? I told him. He said, oh, you're the, the divine healer. I said, no. I'm the divine healer's servant. See? I said, I'm I, down praying for the sick. And he said, I really, I don't want to do this, preacher. And we led him to Christ there. Then we got their, their taxi cabs were horse-driven. Gasoline cost about $2.80 a gallon. And their, a used automobile, about a 40 model, would probably cost four or $5,000. So there's not... No cars in Finland, Harlan. And now, um, we were coming down. We was in a, a American-made car, and before us, about a half hour, there was a 35-model B8 Ford had went down the road, and there's not little children crossing the roads. They, they're not used to many cars. So two little fellows started across the road, and the cars, they seen the car. One started one way and one the other, and the driver turning a corner, he lost control of the car when he seen the children, and one of them, he struck his fender as he turned this way. He's making his hook. He struck the child by the chin and threw it across the road, slammed it up against the tree, just crushed him down. And the other one, he hit broadsided like that, rolled him up under the car like that, and his little body kicked out some ten feet behind the car and fell over in the grass flat, and the car run down and wrecked into some rocks. About three or four hundred people out there when we got there. I said, wonder what's the matter? They went over to find out Mr. Moore and Mr. Lindsay, many of you know them. Mr. Baxter was just here. So they went over to find out what was the matter. And they said, oh, a little boy just got killed. He was laying there dead. 
Brother Lindsay come back weeping. And many of you know Brother Lindsay, the editor of the Voice of Healing. Amen. So he was weeping because he has a little boy. They said, Brother Bram, come look at him. <laughs> I didn't want to look at him. I got a boy of my own. And I've been two or three months over there, and I didn't want to. I'd already been in France and England and many places. And I said, I don't want to see him because I don't want to get broke up here in the meeting going on. Been many things. There's thousands of people coming in there. So I said, I don't want to see the little fella. So we wait a little while. They won't know if we would take him to the undertaker's morgue. Somebody picked the other one up before we got there and had taken it to the hospital. It was still alive, but this one was dead. So I said, well, we'll have to put him here in the back seat. So I said, well, I'll get out. And when I went out, they had a coat laying over his little face. And they went back and pulled that little coat back from over his face. And friends, it would, it would almost kill a person to look at. A little fellow laying there all mashed up. And I thought, oh, my, they're gone somewhere. The Finns live in the city and work out in the country. So they went to get the father and mother of the child. And I thought, what a disappointment. What a, what a feeling that poor dad and mother's going to have when they find this little boy here. I started to cry. There's a bunch of them that I couldn't speak English. Wasn't nobody there but Brother Moore and Lindsay and Brother Baxter and I was the only ones who could speak English. I started to walk on away from the little child. And as I walked away from the child, I felt something lay their hand on my shoulder. Well, I thought it was Brother Lindsay. And I turned around. There was nobody around me. I thought, that's strange. I still felt the hand on my shoulder. I thought, there's nothing wrong with my shoulder. And I started to turn away again. I felt it again. Well, I thought, well, isn't that strange? See how easy you can get away? I looked back, and they were still fixing the... Somebody looked at the little boy. I gazed down at that little boy, and I thought, say, I've seen that child somewhere. I looked, and I said... I told the interpreter, I said, ask them ministers if this little boy's been in a prayer line. Nobody knew him. I said, but strange seems to me like I've seen that child before. I start, and there it was again. I look back again. There it was. I noticed that little, what we call here in America, a little crock haircut. You little one of these little, like little boys used to wear a little panty waist, you know, and great big rib stockings that come up way Back in my day, when we were little boys, and his little shoe had been knocked off his foot, and his little foot was run through his sock, his little hands were laying mashed in like this, his mouth was open, his big brown eyes rolled back in his head. I said, I, I looked, and there was them pine trees, them rocks. I said, I know who he is. I know who he is. I said, Brother Moore, Brother Lindsay, you all, get your Bible right quick. So what's the matter? I said, turn back at the fly leaf. I had people all over America to write in their fly leaf for their Bible to see if it would come to pass. See if it was. I said, read your fly leaf. Look at there. I said, see them cedar trees? See them rocks? Boy about eight years old, light brown hair, crock hair cut, big brown eyes, legs broke down, hands like this, automobile. Well, Brother Moore said, that's the boy exactly. I said, that's him. Oh, my. <laughs> That's when you really feel God coming near. There it is. All right. I said, now you all make him keep quiet. And so they begin to quieten him. And I said, way over in the homelands, the Lord has spoke a vision that this boy was going to be raised up. We've got it written on the fly leaf of our Bible. They interpret it out. And I hear some of them kind of laughing at one another like that, knowing the boy had been laying there 30 minutes dead. I said, if it isn't so, then you call me a false prophet. So we knelt down, had the people bow their heads. I said, Heavenly Father, you who told me this, you are a true and living God. And I know that your words will not fail. And there I ask you, Lord, to confirm your word to your servant. And this is a boy that you said shall rise. So therefore, death, let him loose. And the boy raised up screaming and jumping and running all over the place. Now, how many is read it in your books? Let's see your books. The book, it's wrote in the books. You see the voice of healing? Now, if you want to come down to my office, there's the officials of a Finland with their seal on it was standing there watching it done. Hallelujah. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. All demons out of torment couldn't stop it. There, God has said so. 
Now, I never healed a boy. God had already showed what was going to be done. Just a little... Have we got time for just a little word more? That night when we went in to the mess of Holly, had 25,000 in the building. They had a, a line standing down the street for six city blocks, 30 abreast, waiting to try to get in. The police, the soldiers, everything. And when we got out, I had to get out of the car many blocks down, two or three blocks, little Finnish soldiers with their rifles. Little bitty boys in the army that killed them nearly all off. Little boys hadn't even shaved. Little smooth face. And coming walking along there, keeping the people. And they stood there on the street. Russian sin. Tears running down their cheeks. Brother, I'm telling you, communism, what it needs tonight is a good touch of old time salvation demonstrated before them to change the whole picture. Well, them Russians put their arms around the fins and said, we'll accept a God like that. In communism, you just try to feed them some old something like some lodge or something you belong to. Nothing against the lodge now. But the lodge has got its place, but it ain't the place of the church. The church is the power of God moving in the church. Well, they stood there. And when you take any salvation or anything that will make a Russian put his arms around a thin and hug him, brother, there's something's happened. <laughs> That's right. And if he'll do that to two men, he'll do it to the whole nation. He'll do it to the whole world. What we need tonight is Jesus Christ as the answer to every problem. Amen. Whether it's healing, whether it's salvation, whether it's bringing nations together, whatever it is. Then that night, I remember going in there and we are going to start the line. We just got in. And those people just stand at their heads bowed, not because I was passing. It's because what I was representing, Jesus Christ. And then when it got in, I remember going into the room that night. You just get in the books, those little books called Man Sent from God. You got an article of it there. Not in detail. It just how it says something other how it was done. But I remember going in the room. There's a, a girl's dormitory, such as it was, in the Masa Holly. And I happened to look. I heard a door slam. And they were singing then, Only Believe. And I looked, and out of there stepped a little Finnish girl. Little fellow about that high. And she was all crippled up, about the size of this little lady sitting here. And she had um, a big brace around her here, and one of her legs is a little shorter than the other, and this leg was perfectly helpless. And it made a brace in front and back here, and let her leg swing free in a big shoe, and right in the end of the toe they had a, a snap. And a strap come up and went over her shoulder and hooked back there in the back of the brace, and she had two crutches. And how she walked, she'd set those two crutches out, then she'd pull her little shoulder up and throw that leg out, and those braces would catch, which would act the place of a leg while she would walk. Very pitiful. And I come to find out later she was a little war orphan. The Russians had killed her father and mother both in the massacre up there towards the border. And they, she was just a little orphan, wondering about people to take her. And her little ragged skirts hanging down, her little chopped off hair hanging along this way, ragged. Great big old dress on it, all ragged on the bottom. And she looked at me, her little pale face from hunger. And I thought, God, merciful to that little thing. And she looked at me. She jerked back because they'd been strictly worn on the street not to say nothing. Because it just, you know, but that wasn't my wishes, but the manager's. I, I tell you this. When they'd all get in church, I'd got some of that money. You ought to see what it is. I'd get out there on the street and buy candy, and I had kids strung all up down the street. I like little fellows. I got a little girl sitting in here somewhere tonight, little bitty pumpkin seed about so high. I like. I love the little fellows. I squeeze them till I hurt them. So they, I was thinking of that poor little thing, how she was, and she stooped back. She thought she did something wrong. I looked at her. The two soldiers in front went on. The two behind stopped and waited. And they said, oh, I said, just a minute, just a minute. I couldn't make them understand, just, just a minute. I know that child wanted something. And I looked at her, and she looked up at me, and I noticed her little lips quivering. She held her head down. I knew she wanted to come over there where I was at. And I motioned to her. I said, come on, honey. She kept her head down. She looked up and she seen my fingers. She couldn't understand what I was saying. 
And I motioned to her. She smiled. She tucked her little crutches and set them out. Here she comes. I just stood still. These other two soldiers backed up against the wall and was watching. She come over. So she, I never done a thing. Just stood like this. That poor little fella come over right close to where I was. She stopped, set her little crippled leg over to like that so she could brace herself, put her little crutches back, reached down and got my coat, pulled it up and kissed me on the pocket of my coat, dropped it down. She looked up and the tears running down her little peak, looked, face, her little baby blue eyes. And she pulled her little skirt out, said, Ketis, Ketis means thank you. She pulled her little skirt out and said, thank you. Oh, my, my heart was throbbing. I looked at the child and I said, oh, honey. And I looked going and there went a vision. There went the girl walking without crutches or braces. And I said, honey, the Lord's healed you. And she, she couldn't understand what I was saying. And I said, the Lord's healed you. And they kept saying, Brother Baxter runs to the door and motion, come on, like that. So I had to go on. I know she'd receive it sometimes. She'd see it. And I got on that night after, after all the, the crowds got in there in the prayer line, I called a great big group. And just as soon as they began to see what the Lord was doing, hearing that that day where thousands were seated, my, they had them numbered A, B, C, D, E, F, and on up into the balconies and so forth. And then when this, they began to see the Lord move out there, show visions, and have to have an interpreter tell what the vision was to the person they'd raised. That was exactly the truth. They just throw away their crutches and walk away. They didn't wait to be prayed for. They just know God was there. That's all there was to it. That's all they cared for. And you're, after a while, I said, well, they started to go, and I said, well, I just feel I ought to have a few more. I said, call about a five more. And Brother Baxter said, Brother Brown, you oughtn't to do that. I said, I'm feeling all right. Something is telling me to do it. And the next one was called was that darling little girl. I seen him set her up on the platform. She got her crutches. And here she comes. I said, Sister Isaacson was the interpreter that night. I said, Sister Isaac, just repeat what I'm saying. She said, all right. And when she got there, I said, bless your little heart, honey. You're the little girl that met me out there in that dormitory a while ago. Yeah. I said, Jesus heals you. You're well. I said, you go over there and let some of these men take that brace off of you. Now, you hold your little hands on your hip. And when that braces are coming down, you let your hand slip down your limb just about as far as what your leg is short. So she went on over and I called another. And about that time when it was discernment just left that one, about that time I heard a scream. Here she come across the floor, the braces over her head, and the crutches in her hand running just as hard as she could go, a praising God. Oh, friends, hour after hour, day after day, what our Lord Jesus has done. Won't it be wonderful someday when we sit over there under the evergreen trees down by the stream of life where the leaves are for the healings of the nations, arms will be stacked, smoke gone away, no more war, no more trouble, no more heartaches, no more old age. When our feet hits that blissful shore, every old gray-headed mother or dad will turn back to a young man and a woman again. The atoms of this body which will be destroyed are broke up and contaminated, contaminated and run away out in the air. That spirit, when it returns back in the rapture, will pick up every one of those atoms. That body will be formed again in an immortal image of God. What a wonderful time. Amen. I have greater works than these of John, said Jesus. For the works the Father has given me to finish, the same testify of me. Can we bow our heads? Our Heavenly Father, stand in speaking here to this lovely audience packed in here tonight under this glorious, nice, cool night setting here under the stars. And we thank Thee for this glorious time of fellowship around the Word. We thank Thee for the afternoon service, for those who respond to the call. Praying tonight will even bring many more sinners to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus. My mind keeps drifting back to that poor little boy, to the vision across the nations, way down in Africa, in that heathen land. To see you, what you would do there, and the marvelous works, and thousands coming at one time to know thee. 
God, tonight I pray there in Boston that you're making arrangements right now for us to move into Africa and India, down into Palestine. We realize the day is evil and the time is short. Now, Lord, while we're here in Connorsville in this part of your vineyard, let us labor with all of our might. May your children now tonight just lay aside every sin, every weight of unbelief. Look now straight to you. You said, I can do nothing of myself. I only do what the Father shows me. Father, I pray that you will come tonight and confirm your word that said, And the things that I do shall you also. Greater in this, for I go to my Father. Now may the Father God send his Son, Christ Jesus, in the form of the Holy Spirit, to baptize every heart. And may the great angel of God, who was sent to guide and direct the life of thy unprofitable servant, may he come tonight and speak and confirm the words of God, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God will confirm his word always. All right. Let's start. I pray tonight for divine guidance. May the Holy Spirit, promised by our Lord, may he come close now. I've been telling of the experiences of over in Finland. Thou dost know the many, many thousands of things that you did over there in the harvest fields when we were there. Now, Lord, way across here, thousands of miles, and down in Africa, and all the islands, and everywhere. Now, Father, I pray that you'll come tonight in great power, and we'll do the same thing here in the homelands of America. God, give us one more great revival before judgment comes. Grant it, Lord. We realize that we're certainly weighed in the balance tonight. Either a blow-up of a bomb or one of the greatest panics that ever struck the country. Have mercy, God. Bless us together tonight. Many have come. They're standing around, hungering, thirsting for God. May everyone that's thirsting go away filled. May critics be ashamed. May saints be blessed. May the sick be healed. God get glory to his Son, Jesus Christ, for we ask it in his name. Amen. There's nothing I can do. But if God will speak, then he'll confirm his word. Is that right? But you have faith now. You believe. If you believe with all your heart, God will bring it to pass. Now, I want you to... What about down in there on the cots and stretchers and around different places? I see one cot down there. I don't think there's been over about one person that's ever sat in there, as far as I know, since this meeting has started. No matter what was wrong with him, crippled or anything, but what went away healed. No matter what was wrong with him, every cripple that's come in has been healed. Death... Dumb, all different diseases. Okay. All right. I want you to be just as reverent as you can. Now, I want to ask you this vital question right now. If Jesus Christ was here wearing this suit that he gave me and standing with my shoes that he gave me, he couldn't do no more for you than what he's doing right now. For his... When he was here on earth, he already, with his blood, purchased your healing and asked you to believe it. Is that right? That's all he could do. See, he can't heal you twice. He's done healed you once, so he can't do the same thing twice to heal all your diseases when he died. Now, the only thing that I or any other minister could do would be point you to that all-sufficient sacrifice. Is that right? A minister could teach it out of the Word and say, here it is. Then after that, that ought to be enough, oughtn't it? But look at the goodness of God. He sends something else. Then he sends his servants, prophets, and so forth, and with the discernment of spirit, and so forth, and, and vindicates himself amongst his people by blessings and powers and, and resurrection powers. 
and by his great works. Now, Jesus said that when he was here on earth, that he could do nothing unless the Father showed him. Is that right? He knew the secrets of the people's hearts. Is that right? He had talked to a person a little while. He knew what they were thinking about, what they were doing. He said he perceived their thoughts. Well, if he's the same yesterday and forever, he lives in the church today just the same. Will you believe that if he'll do it? The Lord bless you. Now, whether he will, that's to God. This is only a divine gift. Now, I know I've got critics standing here. But my dear Christian friends, and to you, my critic, by a divine gift which God has given to me, you can question it or you've got a right to do what you wish to, whatever you want to, but in the judgment of God, you'll see I've told you the truth. God has vindicated for millions and millions of people. Scientific world, America, the best scientists we have, has investigated it and said it's absolutely the truth. Science took a picture of it and everything. We have it here. Of course, we don't let those things, we don't bind or sell on Sunday of things like that. We respect God's day. We didn't come here for money. We come here to help you. That's one thing that I've kept my meetings clean by God. So it's never, if I found a manager and he started begging for money, that's the last day that manager is with me. If God don't supply the needs, then it's time for me to go home. That's right. Nothing else. Yeah, I'm just here to help you. And I'm doing all I can do. And I ask you tonight of your support of faith and prayer for me while I'm ministering to the people. All right. Come, mister. I try sometimes to get that microphone set just right so it will... Sometimes my voice can't tell where I'm at. Well, I'm here somewhere else. And now, you and I being strangers, I suppose... We are. Uh, what, was you here this afternoon in the meeting? Yes. You were. Do <clears throat> you believe that what I'm speaking here concerning Jesus Christ is the truth? Yes. Sir. You do. You believe that? Yes. Isn't that strange? As soon as you said that, a real strange feeling come to you, didn't it? That was the angel of the Lord. He's, uh, he's with you now. I wish everybody had faith like that. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You've had a lot of trouble, haven't you, brother? Yes, Hallelujah. You've had uh, some operations in your life. Yes. One of them is on a spine. Yes, sir. Isn't that right? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. And you've got to uh, see him putting something around your arm to try to test blood. It's a low blood pressure. Yes. Is that right? Right. You're also extremely nervous, caused from that back condition. Yes, sir. Is that the truth? That's true. All right, come here just a moment. You know anyone out there? Any people's out there? A few. All right. You know that's the truth of the man, you who know him? All right. I never seen him in my life. Just now I couldn't tell you what was told him. There's something there about an operation, I know. But now, you wonder what happened. See? It was breaking into another dimension, or what you want to call it that. I call it into another world. It perhaps told him things of what he did in his life, what's taken place. Maybe years and years ago. But every word of it was the truth. Is that right, brother? That's right. Amen. Amen. Think they can? Can you hear the voice? Can you all hear it coming in when it's a? Yeah. Let's, let's I mean, you, you and I talk again just a moment, yeah. please. Because you got such good faith, hey, a person man. of that type. Now, whatever was said about you is the truth. Is that right? Sure. Now, I'm talking to you. It's like the Lord talked to the woman at the well. Yes. He said, "Bring me a drink of water." See, only thing he was trying to do is catch her spirit. Yes. And then he found out what she'd been doing. She was an adulteress. And he told her, and she said, well, I see that you're a prophet. You remember the story? Sure. Yes, sir. You've got more trouble in your home, too. Yes, sir. It's your wife. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's it's right. It's something in her neck and head keeps hurting. Is that yes, right? Sir. Is that the truth? That's right. Yes, well, now you're both healed. <laughs> you can go home and get well. God bless you. Lord Jesus, bless my brother.
Now, everyone be real, just thankful to God. All right, bring the lady. Come. Suppose that we are strangers, are we, lady? Now, if God knows what was in life, he knows what will be in life. And if God will reveal to me what was in your life, and then will tell me what will be in your life, if he tells me what was, if you'll know whether that's the truth or not, because you've lived up that space of life. But then, then if he tells you the truth about that, you'd believe he'd tell the truth about the other, what the rest of it would be true. Thank you, sister. Now, you're, you're aware that something's going on. You're conscious of that. Now, that isn't nothing. That's, did you see that picture of the angels of the Lord? Have you been here when they had it pers- it's passing out through the audience last week? No. I don't think we have one here tonight. It was taken, standing on the platform of 30,000 people, the American Photographer Association taken. Now, that's what you, what you feel in the supernatural realm. Now, I see that you're very, very sick. You have a cancer. Is that right? That cancer is in the womb, man. Is that true? Yes, sir. Only chance is God. And he is the chance. He's the cure. Will you believe it? Yes, sir. Will you accept it? Yes, sir. Come here. Heavenly Father, I pray now as I lay hands upon her, may the Holy Spirit come upon her and condemn that cancer and kill it. May it be drove from her this night in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you now, sister. Go on your road happy. Rejoice. Thank God for your healing. Don't forget tomorrow's service. I see that I'm not going to be able to stand in this very long within a conscious... Just a moment, lady. That's, that's all right. Go, go ahead. Excuse me. It's a lady praying way back out there. I see the pulpit. It's about a preacher. No, it's a preacher's wife. That's right. It's a preacher's wife. It's a, she has a rupture. Is that right, lady, sitting there? All right. I could see that minister standing, but I couldn't tell just where it was at. It's his wife that he was pointing. All right, God bless you. Now go believe and you can be made well. Let's say thanks be to our Lord now just a moment. Have faith now in God, anywhere you are. At this time, by God's sovereign grace, every spirit is under our control now. To be reverent. Remember, one thing could cause much trouble. Be reverent. All right, bring the man. Now you must truly have faith in God. How do you do, sir? Patient. Excuse me, I'm not beside myself, but sometimes I, I was watching something taking place. And do you believe me to be his servant, sir? I sure do. God bless you. Surely God will reward you for your faith. He, if I have told the truth, a man of honor, let alone a minister, would tell the truth. He'd be truthful, wouldn't he? Well, what I've told you is the truth, that Jesus Christ healed you. 1,900 years ago when he died for you. He was wounded for your transgressions with his stripes your heel. And the only thing that I'm doing tonight is by a divine gift pointing you. Something happened. I, I don't, it doesn't seem like the angel of the Lord fly, it was, or it was a... Don't take pictures. No more pictures be taken at this time, please. Not during the prayer service. It, it, it confuses me. See, this angel is a light, too, and I watch it to see what it's doing. So, please, if you will, be kind. 
I couldn't tell where it's flashing or the people just seen the a flash. I have to watch it where it goes, you see, to see somebody in prayer. They'll hang where they are. Then I watch it and it breaks loose and the vision comes and that's how I see it. So be reverent. Now let's see. I believe I was talking to you, wasn't it? I just want to talk to you just a moment, just in order so that you will be able to, I can contact your life. See, only God alone knows it. We're strangers, are we, sir? We are strangers, yes, sir. Now, uh, but God knows you. He's known you all your life. Isn't that right? That's right. All right. If he knows you, then he's able by his grace to reveal to me your desire or what is wrong or if there's any sickness wrong with you. It's about to take your life or something. He can tell me that. And now, and then if he, there's always, before you can find a cure, you have to find the cause. See? If you say, well, there's something wrong, I don't know what it is. Well, you find out what it is. Well, that's what the doctor does. If you went to a doctor and said, I got a headache, he'd give you an aspirin. That wouldn't be a very good doctor. You went back again, said, my headache's back, he'd give you another aspirin. That isn't right. There's something causing that headache. He's got to get to the cause first. Then he can find the cure, if there is one. Now, you have some sort of a, a, a gland trouble that's bothering you. And isn't that right? That's right. Thyroid or something, a thyroid gland? Yeah. Th- isn't that right? And I thought I heard that spoke. I wasn't sure. You're very concerned about your, your mother, too, aren't you? I sure am. She has a, is it a gallbladder trouble? Yeah, I Yes, that's so. right. Mm-hmm. Say, <laughs> so I'll tell you where your trouble is, sir. Your greatest trouble is needing the Lord Jesus. That's right, isn't it? You have a habit that you're doing. It keeps you upset all the time, making you nervous. That makes it worse than ever. Right. Smoking cigarettes. God don't want you to do that. That's true. You ready to stop it? I'm ready to stop it. You ready to give your whole life over to Christ? Come here. Lord Jesus, forgive him of ever trespass. Now may he go and sin no more, may this trouble leave him, may his dear old mother be healed of this stomach, gallbladder trouble. May she be made well, Lord, and I pray that you'll take this man into your arms tonight. Heal him, Lord, and let him be your servant the rest of his days, because he realizes he's standing in the presence of Almighty God who's looking down from this tonight, I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. All right. Come, lady. Be reverent. Do you know him? The man is praying. You're sitting there praying. You're needing the Lord Jesus, aren't you? Oh, the man with the rose in his coat sitting there. Yes. Right where that rose is lands where your trouble's at. Heart trouble. Is that right? He just healed you then while you were sitting there praying. Have faith. Don't doubt. God shall show you greater things. You're the patient, aren't you, sister? You're the next person to be prayed for. You and I are strangers, I suppose. We are. Do you believe that God sent me to be his servant, his prophet? Oh, then if there... There's nothing in your life, then, if that's the truth, that God couldn't reveal to me. And if I be anointed now with his Spirit, it'd be kind of hard for you to hide your life, wouldn't it? It really would. Now, you could, I couldn't heal you. There's nothing I could do about that, because Christ's already done that. But he hasn't told you your life yet. You know your life, but 
He has already healed you when he died at Calvary. By the way, you aren't even seeking healing for yourself, for your husband. Is that right? Mm -hmm. The man has something wrong in here. It's sinus. Is that right? Listen, your husband smokes cigarettes too. You go tell them to may the Lord take now and heal him of that sinus and make him completely well. Do you believe he'll do it? I know he will. Almighty God, author of life, may the power of God come upon this man and may he be healed and may this woman be blessed, Lord, as she leaves this platform and may they both live a long, happy life in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you now. Go and rejoice and be happy. God bless you. That's fine. Let's say thanks be to God. We know that our Lord Jesus is ever near. You believe? Don't doubt now. Have faith. You don't have to be here. Just be there. It's all right. Just, just keep praying. Keep having faith. <clears throat> How do you do, sir? Mm -hmm. I perceive that you're a minister. You're not here for yourself either. You're here seeking for somebody else. I believe it's a sister. Is that right? She's had an accident of some sort or was struck on the head or something, hurt her. Some way caused her to have some kind of a fainting spell that, or something like that, or blackout spells like when she comes out of it, she gets real sick. Is that right? You belong to Church of God? Yes. I thought so. Go now and put your hand on your sister. The Lord Jesus makes her well. Amen. <laughs> Let's say thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Believe? All right. You know, get over that chest trouble, lady? If you want to accept it, God will make you well if you just only believe. That's all you have to do. All right, lady. You come. Do you believe him with all your heart? And believe that God will make you well? You do. I was watching. There's something by that man again, but what it was, you got heart trouble yourself. That's what your trouble is. Isn't that right? A leaking heart. You believe God will make you well? Come here just a moment. Now, Father, for this young woman here, just in the, just here, in her young womanhood, I pray that you'll bless her and may she go home and get well, Father. I bless her for this purpose and for this cause, the cause of Jesus Christ who said, if they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. I ask it in Jesus' name for her healing. Amen. Now, do you believe, sister? Yes. And go on, forget about the heart trouble, and serve God all the rest of your life and be forever. Come, lady. You believe, lady? You want to get over female trouble? Been bothering you for some time, hasn't lady? Isn't that true? No one knew that but you and God. But that's the truth, isn't it? Now, if he knows what you did and where you was at and all about it, knows what's wrong with you, his presence is here. Is that right? Now, will you accept your healing of Jesus Christ? You do. God bless you. Then go and testify. And the Lord Jesus bless you and make you well. Let's say thanks be to God. Amen. Be reverent. Come, sir. Now, you might say, Brother Branham, you're reading those people's minds. Well, I'm not. Here, I've never looked at this man. Put your hand on my shoulder, sir. You believe me to be God's prophet with all your heart? If I tell you the truth, will you raise up your hand and witness it's the truth? If God can show me out here what's wrong with you? Got heart trouble, haven't you, sir? That's right. Raise up your hand. Now go and be made well in Jesus' name. I felt that come to me and say, he's reading their mind. No, I'm not. It's the power of God. I'm trying. Let's 
The Lord bless you, sister. Ladies sitting over there at the end of that row right there looking this way, you got stomach trouble, haven't you? You want to be made well? I see you sitting there praying. You've been bleeding ever since I've been praying here, haven't you? All right, you stand up now. You had gastric ulcers, sister, in your stomach, causing it to sour. Is that right? You're healed now. You can go home. Mm -hmm. um, the lady sitting next to you, she had liver trouble, too, sitting there, been having liver conditions. Isn't that right, lady? If that is, stand up and accept your healing, man. Now, you can go home also and be made well. The Lord bless you. Have faith in God. Come, lady. Do you believe with all your heart? Do you believe, lady? You do? If God will tell me what's wrong with you, will you accept your healing? You have diabetes. That's right. Raise up your hand. Now you can go get well. And the Lord bless you and make you well. Say praise be to the Lord. Have faith. Come, lady. You don't get over it. Well, my, it don't look like you'd have TB, but you have. You, you know that? You're conscious of it? Yes. My, certainly don't look like it to look outward, but you are. Yes, you're here the other day. When you heard that I was coming up here, you knelt in a room and said, if you could ever get up on this platform, you'd be healed. Is that right? All right. Now you can go around with him. Your husband also sick. Go tell, just go tell him he's healed too. God bless you both of you. Mm. Have faith. Mm. Got kidney trouble, lady. Very bad. You want to get over it? Yes, Say, I accept my healing of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you now. May you go home and get well in Jesus Christ's name. Come, brother. You want to get over that stomach trouble? Be made well. Would you believe me as God's prophet? Yes. Then go eat what you want to and praise God for your healing. I have faith. Don't doubt at all, but believe. What about... Oh, it's you. <laughs> you have stomach trouble, too. Or you can go also. And I, you, you've had that for a long time, lady. It's a nervous condition called it. You've had it for years and years. I go on just forget about it and say, Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's right. That's the way. Have faith in God. Do you believe? Oh, have faith and God will bring it to pass. You have diabetes, don't you, sir? Sitting right back there. Isn't that right? All right. Stand up now and say, Lord, I accept my healing. May the Lord make you well, Dad. You've been sitting there looking around and a lot of them praying for you and everything. Now you have, you have faith in God. God's going to bring it to pass for you. Let's say thanks be to God. <laughs> That's stomach trouble, don't you? That lady sitting right in there, yes. Lady next to you, rectal trouble there. That's right. It's true. You want to be healed, both of you? Stand to your feet. God bless you. You both can go home now and get well. The good Lord bless you real well. Mm -hmm. You want to go with that female trouble, sister, sitting there? You also have stomach trouble, too. A peptic ulcer in the stomach. Same thing. Cause you to be upset. Is that right? It looks, seems like you've got a real nervous condition, too. I see you weary walking the floor. Isn't that true? That's right. Raise up your hand like that. Now stand up and accept your healing and be made well in the name of the Lord Jesus. All right. Come, lady. You want to get over the heart trouble? Just go and say, thank you, dear Lord Jesus, and go be made well. God bless you. You believe? Go rejoicing. Have faith in God. Excuse me. Something was... I think someone faint. But I, oh, yes, I do. These two sisters are sitting together there, right there at the end of the room. You have kind of fainting spells, don't you, lady? Is that your sister sitting next to you? You're both strangers to me, aren't you? And she has female trouble. Isn't that right? Both of you stand up. Put your arms around one another. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll heal them both. May they go home from here tonight and be made completely well in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Way back up the line here, I see a man sitting there, something, oh, it's a two burglar, sitting on the end of the seat right up here, up this line here, right up under. You want to get over that, sir? 
stand up to your feet then, wave your handkerchief around, say, thank you, Lord. God bless you now. You can go home and get well. Amen. You believe? Dear Earl, what could happen in this meeting? What could happen right now? Children, why would you doubt your master? Is this a patient here? Come, lady. All right. Lady, do you believe me to be God's prophet? Excuse me, I'm getting weak, you see. Do you believe that God sent me? Or oh, you're, you're for this little boy. Is that right? That's your little grandson. Yes, sir. Is that right? Yes, sir. It's kind of an odd thing. Oh, yes, sir. it's your grandson by an adopted daughter. That's right. Is that right? <laughs> Asthma and something wrong with his eyes. Is that right? Take it on home. Let's go get well, Mother. Don't know. Do you believe? How many wants to be healed? Raise your hand. Now lay your hands over on each other just a moment. Oh, God, I pray for mercy, dear God. Heal the needy, Lord, you know my condition just now. May your Spirit come in great power and unction. The Holy Spirit which now moves over this audience. May it fall upon every one of them, Lord. May every one of them be healed right now. I cast away the evil in Jesus Christ's name. Our brother, keep praising God for a while, but that spirit's not open.